In the year 1346, the bubonic plague epidemic began, and it was estimated to kill off 30 to 50 percent of Europe. It was truly disastrous and caused incredible problems for infrastructure, population, economy, and every other facet of a functioning society. After all, it had the highest casualty count of any epidemic, which comes second only to the amount of bank accounts destroyed by Jing Lu's banner. You jerk off. Yeah, I jerk off, yeah. Ding Liu has come and so have I! The newest ice destruction unit is like Little Caesar's Pizza, hot and ready to destroy you. And because I'm down horrendous for this character, we went a little extra hard to theorycraft the best stats and teams and tips for you guys. So if you find this video helpful, let me know by liking and consider subscribing to the channel. We're almost to a quarter of a million subscribers, which is a huge personal milestone for me, and it means a lot. With all that said, my name is Braxiphone, and let's talk about Jing Liu. Jing Liu has some of the highest damaging attacks in the entire game. Like, literally, look how high up she is. She also has some of the highest damaging attacks in the game, up there with other strong damage dealers. And don't worry for those of you who just pulled Don Hung, she's not power creeping him, unless by power creep you mean using more than two fingers. First off, for Jing Liu, your basic attack is useless. Erase it from your memory like the Raiden Beto interaction. Your skill is your main source of damage on her, and you're gonna use it every single turn. The main reason is because every Every time you use Jing Liu's skill, she gains a stack of yep. When she has two syphilis stacks, she goes into her enhanced state, where she can only use her skill, and every time she does, the following will happen. She will not consume a skill point, she will use a stack, she will steal some HP from your team and convert it to attack, and she will go sicko mode. When entering Sinistee, she gains an absurd amount of crit rate, gets her next action move forward by 100%, and with her major traces, she will also get an ult damage bonus and a huge effect resistance buff. Also, when Mommy is in her enhanced state, her skill gives 30 energy on use, but without it, her skill actually gives 20 energy, so basically you're getting less energy than normal when you're not in that state. And because of that, and her ultimate costing 140 energy, it can feel pretty expensive. Her ultimate is called Florephemeral Dreamflux, which I think is Spanish for God, I wish that were me on the other side. When you use your ultimate, you gain a stack of stats, and it can actually be tempting to use her ult to get the state up. But as my mom used to always say when I asked to be let out of my cage, no. You get so many buffs when you're in Sisyphus state that it's a big damage loss to ult before you're in it, unless you see the opportunity to clean up a wave early and save some cycles. Even if you overcap on energy by using another skill, it can be worth it to save that ultimate if it won't secure a wave clear. Also, just as a small tip, if you use your ultimate right after you use your last stack for her skill, you can actually still keep the state up as long as your turn hasn't ended. So it's worth keeping that in mind, especially so you don't overcap on energy. Lastly, her other major traits will give you 10% action forward on every skill, which is nice for more drawn out fights. She also gets speed in her traces, so because she's blue and she's fast, she's basically confirmed to be a Sonic the Hedgehog XP. And her technique is going to be something you want to use at every opportunity, since she's not required to be on field for it to work. It'll freeze anything it comes in contact with and start Jing Liu with a stack of Rizji and 15 bonus energy. For a talent priority, forget that basic attack exists, just completely wipe it from your memory. Max everything else, because she's your new main. Destruction units are incredibly strong, especially with the three target scenarios we keep seeing in Memory of Chaos. With her HP drain, Jing Liu is kind of like Blade, if Blade could make me come. But unlike Blade, she lacks the self-sustain, so I'll go over details on how to fix that in the team section, but for now, let's talk about her best build. Since you're never using another damage dealer again, you're probably ready to go all in with your trailblaze power. And with Jing Liu, you have a few different options when it comes to maxing her out. Though she's the hottest character in Honkai Star Rail, Jing Liu still is an ice unit. For four piece sets, you're mainly looking for the Glacial Frost set or the Genius of Brilliant Stars set. Glacial Frost is the better general use set for her since it's going to give crit damage after using her ultimate and ice damage on the two piece. It's the fucking ice set. Who else is it gonna be good on other than ice characters? But with that said, there's only two ice DPS in the game. No, your DPS payload does not count. And there's not really characters in the game that want the wind set anymore since the speed set was released. So you can opt for something that's within similar damage, like the quantum set. Jing Liu has a ton of attack stats already, and the quantum set will let her ignore some defense on enemies, especially if they have quantum weakness. Most DPS in the game can use the quantum set for the four-piece effect, and if you have one already, you don't need to farm more. And I'm sure if you don't have one already, you've at least been trying to work on getting your seal at a 70 crit rate. Between the two four-piece sets, you can choose the one with the 
the better sub stats. Personally, I farmed the four piece ice set for about three months because I'm mentally ill. For planar sets, Rudolent Arena is going to be best. For some reason, there's this misconception going around that Rudolent Arena doesn't work with crit rate stat changes. It actually does, but only if those stat changes would be reflected on the stat screen for the character. In Jinglu's case, she gets an absurd crit rate buff when she goes into her sussy state, which can activate Rudolent's effect. You may not have 100% uptime on Rudolent, but the effect is so strong that it ends up being the best choice anyways. But for other options, you can go with Space Ceiling Station or Inert Salsoto, whichever has better substats. For Jinglu, you're gonna want crit damage on her chest, speed or attack on her boots, ice damage sphere, and an attack percent rope. You're likely not going to need crit rate as a main stat since she gets such high crit rate buffs, so damage is the way to go. Since most of her damage is in her Sasuke state, you're gonna want more attacks off to have more opportunities to activate it and also generate more energy. So having a high speed stat wins by a pretty decent margin here. But attack boots are fine if you don't really have good speed boots for now. Ice damage sphere makes sense because she does ice damage. And because she sucks your friendly HP and her max amount is based on her attack, an attack rope gives her more damage and a higher buff cap. For substats, I recommend getting speed to 134 or 147 first, then, assuming you already have enough crit rate, focus on crit damage and attack percent. I'd say break effect, but ice break is kind of a joke, so... As always, here's a build summary, and enjoy the next, like, 5 to 10 seconds of music or something. If you're like me, you probably already know what weapon Jinglu wants. Miss Splitter Reforged is one of the best. Obviously, her signature light cone is going to be best in slide. It's the best looking light cone in the entire game on the best looking character in the entire game. Okay, you actually don't need it, but it's pretty good. Some of the best premium light cones are I Shall Be My Own Sword for its crit damage, damage bonus, and defense ignore. Brighter Than the Sun for its crit rate and attack percent. The Unreachable Side for its crit rate and damage bonus. And Something Irreplaceable for its stat bonuses. But a secret vow at high superimposition is fantastic for the damage bonus it gives, and with Under the Blue Sky's passive up at S5, it can be even better than a lot of the 5 star light cones. For free to play players, you'll most likely want to use On the Fall of an Aeon from her to shop, and it can actually be competitive and even better than some of the other premium 5 star light cones, depending on your stats, talent levels, and the content that you're in. If that one's on Mr. Dill, though, you can use the most welcome you under the blue sky or a secret vow at a lower superimposition or Worst case scenario, collapsing sky at S5. Despite the fact that you and I would become dogs just to be in Jinglu's presence, wolf walk time is actually not good on her like that. <laughs> Here's some damage comparisons of light cones based on some simulations. Keep in mind, for different simulated scenarios, other light cones could pull ahead or fall behind, so take everything with a grain of salt. The other important thing to max Jinglu's damage is to build her a solid team, so let's talk about those next. Welcome to the team section of the Jinglu guide. Now, if you're hyper fixated on the Jinglu C, I have some good news for you, even if you're a free to play player. This character, though she does work incredibly well with some premium units, there's a couple units that are basically like must haves for her, but they're all four stars. So let's talk about some of the premium options and some of the more free to play friendly options. I'll go over everything. And for those of you who don't have Silver Wolf, uh, I, I tried to make this video more uh, digestible for you, but you should pull for Silver Wolf. Okay, so the first team, I know I said I would talk about some free to play friendly stuff but we still got four more teams here so just hear me out listen up i'm going to talk about what's optimal and then free to play friendly stuff first off i want to talk about her hp consumption one thing that you're going to have to deal with with jinglu teams is sustainability is it's going to be tough four percent gone on your teammates max hp is going to add up a lot it's going to feel really bad over time and mostly the biggest reason for that is actually because it's taking from your whole team if it was taking 16% from one unit every turn, that wouldn't be so bad, but because it hits every single character, you basically need to have AoE heals to keep up. And that's why Locha is actually probably the best pairing in the game for her in terms of supports. The reason Locha and not like any other character that has AoE healing is because Locha overheals so much, it actually is ridiculous. I know in my guide for Locha, I said you don't actually need the overhealing. In Jinglu's case, the overhealing can be really super clutch because Locha has it so on his Abyss Flower is active whenever you attack with any one of these characters you're gonna gain 
HP back to everyone, assuming you have all his traces unlocked. And when you have that in effect, you can basically nullify the amount of HP that she's draining by healing it all back with Locha instantly upon attacks of your other characters. And that is going to be such a useful utility for you because when you're getting attacked by three or four enemies and they're all attacking your Tingyun all at once, that means that you're not going to have to worry about spot healing any of the other characters on your team. You only have to focus on the one character that's getting really, really unlucky because he's going to naturally bring everyone back. Trust me, I tested this with Lynx. I thought Lynx would be a super great healer for Jinglu, and she is, but she cannot really solo sustain in some of the hardest content, or she can, but you have to get really lucky with the enemy's targeting. Lynx can give Jinglu a little bit of a taunt, and as a destruction unit, she does have a little bit of chunkier HP, which is super nice. And the heal over time from Lynx does somewhat counteract Jinglu, but you are going to struggle with Lynx. You're going to struggle with Natasha. You're going to struggle with Bailu even. Oh, actually, especially Bailu, because Bailu's got the random healing. Even if it is bounce, you could just miss one character entirely. It is possible to solo sustain, but Locha really is a game changer for Jinglu's self-sustainability. He's the only character that I've been able to consistently self-sustain with. Fushuan, you can if it doesn't last too long, but in terms of like really good consistency, Locha is definitely the way to go. Now, I want to talk about Jinglu's other best partner for a support, and that's going to be Bronya. Locha is going to be what you need to survive. Bronya is going to be what you need to make Jinglu deal like an absurd amount of damage. The thing is, Jinglu gets into her state after she gets two stacks of you already you know what I'm talking about. And Bronya allows you to essentially instantly get that state. You can skill with Jinglu, and then you can use Bronya's skill, bring Jinglu up, and skill again, and boom, you instantly have that state active, and then you get another attack with Jinglu. So it's three Jinglu attacks at once, and one of them is Bronya buff. If you're at the start of the fight, you definitely have your ultimate, and you just get so much damage out of Bronya's buffs, and out of Jinglu just being able to get into that state more per battle. And the last character I want to talk about is Pela. Now, lucky for you, Pela has been on every banner since this game launched and never missed a single one. This is probably like the most commonly owned character. I wouldn't be surprised if more people had Pela on their account than had the actual Trailblazer. I actually prefer Pela to Silverwolf in a lot of scenarios where you would actually play Jinglu, because Jinglu is an AoE destruction unit. Though she can deal some pretty high single target damage, you're going to bring her to something that has multiple enemies in it, and Pela having that defense shred on multiple enemies is great, and she's a tight match for Jinglu, so if you're trying to break ice weakness on enemies, Pela Jinglu can be a solid combo. That's not to say Silverwolf is bad, Silverwolf is actually still incredibly good, but it's just that, you know, if you're already against ice weak enemies, you can just bring Pela instead for the AoE defense shred, and that could be pretty good. So for free-to-play players that all have Pela because there's no way you don't have Pela on your account, she's pretty good. The other thing to note about Jinglu is that she's not super SP heavy, so she does work really well with Bronya, Locha, and Pela because Pela doesn't need to use her skill every round, Locha doesn't need to skill every round, Bronya wants to skill every time, Jinglu wants to skill every time, and because she's not super skill point heavy, ultimately you can recover enough to sustain with this team, or sustain your, your skill points with this team. Speaking of sustain in HP though, I wanted to talk a little bit about what that means if you can't solo sustain if you don't have Locha. So one thing that I found is if you're against enemies that are weak to fire, uh, playing Asta is always going to be good, but also you can play Trailblazer. Fire Trailblazer is going to give you a little bit of shielding that will help keep you safe during all of your battles, and that little bit of shielding combined with Lynx's healing should help preserve you, even through content where you're losing HP from Jinglu every single turn. Asta is just a really good pair with Jinglu because of the speed buff and the attack buff, but uh, I will say it doesn't feel as good to get a massive attack buff from Asta as it does to shred enemy defense because Jinglu does get such a massive attack buff from herself. But overall, this can be pretty good. Using Fire Blazer with any sustaining unit, for example, you can play Bailu, you can play Natasha, like any other sustaining unit and Trailblazer. Together, this can be like a pretty solid team. And if you have 100% Jepard uptime, then you could play another support as well. This one is pretty risky because basically after a certain amount of attacks with Jinglu, you're going to be really hurting for HP. And if a, fight, if a fight drags out too long, like in Simulated Universe or something, and you don't have that healing, that's going to suck. So I do still recommend a healer. But Jepard also being ice alongside Jinglu and also just being such a monster of a unit, uh, he can be good here. And as I mentioned before, Fushuan is, is going to be amazing. So the next character I wanted to talk about is going to be Tingyun instead of Branya. Tingyun is a character that can be pretty solid with Jinglu. The only downside of Tingyun is that energy tuning for Jinglu is a little bit tough. I have found every single time I play with Tingyun, the first ult with Tingyun is very helpful to get Jinglu's ult up, but then what happens after that is I end up desyncing Tingyun and Jinglu. So whenever I'm trying to use Jinglu's ult or use Tingyun to get Jinglu's ult faster and get an extra stack, I will have to overcap energy on Tingyun or overcap energy on Jinglu one or the other, and it doesn't feel super good. That's not to say Tingyun is bad. Tingyun is always going to be a super strong character with 
most DPS in the game that skill and attack, and she will be good with Jingnu, but I will say I definitely prefer Branya uh, in this certain team composition. And then as you can tell, Pela is going to be uh, your best friend here. And Locha for solo sustain as well. Speaking of solo sustain, I probably should have mentioned this somewhere in the video, but if you really want to max out Jingnu's buff and, and try to get as much attack out of it as possible, around talent level 10, that's around 3,500 team HP on average, which actually isn't hard to hit. Most of your characters will be probably in that range once you have plus 15 on your headpiece and level 80 on the character. So it's not something you have to actively think about, um, but it's just a fun little fact. Okay, now next up is a super special team with two damage dealers, a solo sustain and a debuffer. Now, again, if you don't have Locha, you can go someone like Lynx and Fireblazer, or you can go with a, a healer and a preservation, and that's totally fine. Uh, but I will say with Blade in particular, Blade has such good self-sustainability that that's one less character that you have to worry about. Now, something you might not know is that whenever Jinglu drains your friendly HP, that actually gives Blade a stack. You can play both Jinglu and Blade together. And though these characters won't be buffed a ton, Jinglu has so many buffs on herself, it doesn't really matter. And Blade, though he won't be giga buffed, still deals pretty solid damage without buffs. It's not like top tier damage, but he's pretty good without buffs still. And with two damage dealers, you can compensate for the fact that you don't have buffs on these characters. If you're running Pela, you can defense shred the enemy team in AoE. And both Blade and Jinglu are gonna deal so much AoE damage, you should be able to basically shred through the content. Plus with Jinglu draining Blade's HP more, that's more follow-up attacks from Blade, which is more overall Blade damage. And this team, it, though I'm, I'm not gonna call it like the best team in the world, it is a super fun team. And it's a cool way to use two of your faves if you really like Jinglu and you really like Blade. And using two DPS is something we haven't been able to super efficiently do before. So I really like this setup, especially because it doesn't use too many skill points. Uh, Blade only has to use one every three turns. Jinglu's gonna use uh, skill points until she's interstate and then she's not gonna use skill points. Locha doesn't really need him, Pela doesn't really need him. So between these two, you can basically, you're gonna be fine on skill points. Love this setup. There's two other things that I want to quickly mention uh, for team building with Jinglu because I think they're super important. So I tested solo sustain with her a lot. I really wanted solo sustain to work. I wanted to see if you just over invest in your healer, uh, if, so, if solo sustaining was something you could do and it is just so inconsistent in the higher level content. In lower level content, it's not gonna matter, but you know, if you just get unlucky once on a character, you're gonna really struggle to keep them alive. Well, a character that actually helps you sustain is Welt. Welt is a character that can imprison enemies, make them slower, and make them attack less frequently. And if you build effect hit rate on Welt, or even you can just build them DPS and hope that you get some imprisons off of your ultimate, because it already has a high base chance, you can you can solo sustain with this pretty reliably. I did run some things with Welt and then Lynx, or Welt and then another healer, and I was able to basically keep up my whole team just on the fact that the enemies aren't able to attack me as frequently, meaning that I'm basically controlling the damage output to my team, which means I know exactly when I need to heal and I don't have to worry about getting super unlucky quadruple targeted on, on my Ting Yun or something like that. And so Welt is a character that came in clutch for me with Jinglu and I don't think enough people are going to talk about this character as a as a way to still add more damage to your team while not running an abundance and a preservation or two abundance characters. Welt is super great for that. And now I also want to just talk about Yukong because Yukong is a character that Jinglu can technically take advantage of if you're going into her state. If you basically have one stat of Susji, Sushusi. You can basically use uh, Yukong's skill, use her skill, go into that state, ultimate, and then skill again with her because she has the advanced forward when she goes into that state. And she'll be able to use all of Yukong's buff. She'll get two turns in a row and she'll get both of those turns with Yukong's crit damage and attack buff. The only downside to this though is that the crit rate from Yukong is basically useless. You're gonna struggle to not go over 100 crit rate on Jinglu. And so like part of Yukong's buff just literally does nothing. But with that said, if you're against imaginary weak enemies and you have like Locha or something, so you have your two imaginary characters, speed tuning Yukong can be in front of Jinglu. It'll only work sometimes because of our advanced forward. But if you are speed running content, if you're doing like a one or two wave clear, zero cycle clear even, you could make sure that Yukong goes first and you get both of Jinglu's skills inside of that window. So it's just something to think about. I don't prefer to use Yukong with her, but you can use her and it. it's it's an option. And then the last thing is going to be the 2-2 setup with uh, Link's food. Fushuan and then Jinglu Pela. Now, because Fushuan can solo sustain, I'm going to recommend this to you. Your favorite quantum unit that you see in every single team guide, Silver Wolf. I put Lynx and Fushuan in there because I wanted to be extra safe with sustainability, but if you find that you can solo sustain with Fushuan, using Silver Wolf here is super awesome because you can either implant ice or you can implant quantum weakness. You're going to have so much defense shred. Jinglu is an absolute monster who buffs herself and does a ton of damage, and altogether these teams, or sorry, these characters work super well together. Next up, I'll go and talk about Eidolon so that way you guys know uh, 
uh, why you should swipe on her. The answer is because she's really f***ing hot. But if you want, like, more logical reasoning and Eidolons versus Light Cone, keep watching. That's up next. Something that sets Jingliu apart from other Honkai Star Rail characters is that she doesn't actually have a garter on her leg. That has nothing to do with anything else, it's just a fun fact. As usual, don't spend money on this game to clear the content since you can do it free to play, but I will go over her Eidolons so that way you have a better idea of what they do. Jingliu's E1 is basically a blanket buff that gives her 24% crit damage whenever she uses her ultimate or enhanced skill. That 24% crit damage lasts one turn, but it's a nice buff overall. The second half of Eidolon 1 though is what makes it pretty good because it essentially buffs her in single target, making her feel more like a hunt unit. To be completely transparent with you guys, I wish that she would hunt and destroy me, and I would be her single target. I also want to feel 100% of her attack. E2 gives her more damage on her next enhanced skill after using her ultimate. The buff is 80% damage bonus, but it only lasts for the one skill, so overall, it's not a massive damage jump. E3 is a buff to her ultimate and talent, which is honestly kind of mid. E4 is a buff to her attack gain based on her team's HP drain. It ends up being a similar amount of damage gain to Idol on 2 and 3, so it's not something that you need. E5 is going to level up her skill, which is massive, but also her basic attack, which doesn't actually exist. For E6, she gains an extra stack whenever she enters her enhanced state, as well as a 50% crit damage bonus for the entire duration of the state. It's a solid damage jump, and it actually buffs E1 as well, since she'll get an extra enhanced attack, which can help her single target damage even more. Ultimately though, I wish that I were her and she were those hands. Here's what you can expect to see in terms of damage gains from Idol on her. Pretty standard stuff. If you're unsure of whether or not her light cone is worth getting over her Eidolons, the answer is forfeit, forfeit all mortal possessions to Jin. Jingle's Light Cone is more worth the pickup in my opinion because the damage gain from it compared to the fall of an Aeon is pretty decent, but more importantly, it's very pretty and you can use it on any destruction character's smile. Your priority for Jingle should be Branya, Light Cone, and then Eidolons. Though I wanted to spend more time making this video longer and more in depth, I've been sick with a sore throat for about two weeks, so I'm gonna cut the outro short. Tell me who your favorite character in Star Rail is and why it's Jinglu, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Have a good weekend. Good luck on your Jinglu pulls. Bye-bye.